a yarn. I'm going to tell you a yarn. This is a really cool story, and it's a true story. It's about this. This knife, or at least dagger, has the words assassin. You can probably see just etched into the blade there. It has a beautiful bone. Actually, it's a fossilized bone handle with a hole. And that's so you can put a string through there to pull it out of this sheath. Now, it's designed to be concealed. You can pretty much assume this wasn't created for peeling apples or dicing carrots. It's a weapon. So that clip there, that goes on the outside of your jeans and the whole sheath goes down the inside, thus leaving the handle out for quick release. Now in the case of this story, the guy that gave it to me 30 years ago, he had it concealed on the outside of his leg, just above his boot, with a strap. And he was a stranger to me and he gifted me this. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, why would a stranger just give something like that away? There's no such thing as free in this world. There's always uh, something attached. And I said to him, you know, why do you want to give it to me? We don't know each other, mate. We've just met. And he said, because the ghost of the man this knife killed keeps on haunting him day and night. He gets no sleep. It's driving him insane. And I said, well, just throw the knife away. He said, no, I have to give it to another person so they take on that ghost. Okay. Well, I really like the look of this knife. I mean, who wouldn't, you know? It's beautifully balanced. It's a piece of artwork, really. And I don't believe in ghosts. So I thought, why not? So I took it. But I said, I really need to know the story behind this, man, you know, in case it's tied to some crime that's going to get me in trouble. He said, well, it was used purely in self-defense. He said, I was driving through Mexico in a Chevy. On the side of the road was a gorgeous girl with a giant rucksack. I pulled on over. She was hitching. I opened up my boot to put the rucksack in the back. And as I did so, some guy came up behind me with a pistol and stuck it in the back of my neck. Eh, gringo! Start walking. So this, we started walking. And I just, the back of my head, and I was thinking, I'm probably not going to get out of this alive. This guy's going to march me off somewhere, put one on me, take my watch, my wallet, my car, my passport, everything I've got. We're in the middle of nowhere. And all he had on him was that, strapped to the side of his ankle. So they walked into a very secluded area. The girl stayed back at the car. They kept on walking down the secluded area, off the road, away from where anybody could hear a gunshot. Got down there, and the first thing the Mexican told him to do was take off your shoes. And this was his chance. So as he bent down to take his shoes off, he grabbed that, which was on the side of his leg, pulled it out, came up very quickly, back through here, and got the guy right under the chin. Now what must have happened was he must have gone right through here, and severed the guys, must have gone between the two vertebrae and hit the spine because he said the guy dropped like a stone. And it wasn't like your normal, like with an animal when you're hunting, like pig hunting, is a bit of kicking around. This guy just dropped and he was on the ground sort of gasping, but no movement of arms and legs, completely taken out the whole bottom of his body. Like there was no movement, paralysed. Pulled the knife out, cleaned it on the guy's shirt, took the guy's pistol, cleaned that on his shirt too, tucked that down his pants put the knife back in, and went back to his vehicle. The girl was running down the road away because she knew when she saw this guy coming back that uh, something had gone down because there was no gunshots. It's a true story, and that's how I got that knife.